welcome to Cogcam, the internet's first first-person video of how to do lab. Now that we've collected our zoomed-in sample, about 2 micron by 2 micron image, you can see we have a series of bright spots which are our and they're they're round so these are probably our spherical nanoparticles we want to take this image into an analysis software so that we can perform the measurement and there's two ways to do that one way is to save the file to the data folder using the camera button here another way we can right click and it says send to image analysis so here is the same image we saw here except in, instead of this orange red contrast we have it in grayscale you can change the contrast color, colors and do analyses all kinds of uh, tools up here first let's flatten to make sure that the background is flat we can do that in a couple of ways. Here's the flatten routine. And here it says, let's do a first order th thresh uh, with no threshold. If I click execute, it did it. And actually nothing changed because we'd already been doing that here. We did a one, di one dimensional line fit on the live image while we were saving it. What if we try second order? That seemed to cleaned it up a little bit more. So if that's good, if we don't like that, you can always undo what you did to the image. So the raw image is never changed in this software. Now what we want to do is do a uh, analysis. We want to do a section or a profile. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line through the sample through a bunch of these spots like this and try to go through the middle of a bunch of spots because then that means my profile of this line which is displayed here if I go through the middle of this bright spot here then this peak or this profile is the top of that spot and by looking at the height measurement we can determine the radius or diameter of our nanoparticles if it's a sphere. Okay, here's our profile. We see actually our, our background wasn't quite flattened out, but that's okay. We can move these cursors here. Okay, so we move these cursors here. So let's say I want to know how, how high is this peak. So I put one cursor lined up with the top of the peak, one cursor lined up with the base of the peak. So the difference in height from this cursor to this cursor is the, the height of the peak. And that's what here in the blue, this is our blue line, blue cross section. Between those two vertical lines here, they are 0 0.067 microns apart. So this distance is 0 0.067 microns. See here's the x-axis is, is in micrometers. The vertical distance, so that's the height, is 52 nanometers. So from here to here is 52 nanometers. So that's telling me the height of the peak, which should be the diameter of the particle. You see here in the y-axis is in units of nanometers. So that's one particle. We want to start making a data table and measure as many of these particles as you can within a b reasonable amount of time. You can't measure all of these particles, but the more you measure, the better your statistics are going to be to determine what is the average size of a particle and what is the particle size distribution. So that's one. Now from this one cross section I could then also measure this peak. So the height of this peak is now 
36 nanometers and note that. You could also note the horizontal distance because in your post lab there's a question why is this number in micrometers larger than this number in nanometers? There's a reason why these are given in micrometers because this is going to be a larger number and why is that? You'd expect if this particle is a sphere the height and the width should be the same but it clearly, it clearly is not there is some difference and so in post lab report you think about what that difference is due to and uh, I'll give you a hint it has to do with the how we are probing the surface so we're getting a profile of the surface using a probe so that probe only sees the surface there you go there's your hint okay here's our third particle there's a bump here which makes me think maybe there's actually two particles so I'm going to start from measuring here that height 48 nanometers tall and so on 31 nanometers okay so those are those then you can pick another set of peaks another set of bumps you can either move this line which goes through three here, one there, one here. It's easier to measure if the particles are separate and not stuck together. It's hard to tell where one, here it's hard to tell where does one particle end and another particle begin. Here this particle seems to be pretty much all by itself. There's a little something there, but on the, I can measure here. Here's another height, 41 nanometers. If I want to, I can draw another line So you could you could measure many at a time. So this is our red line, and you can see it's overlaying. But I can I could do. So you have a lab partner, right? So the two of you could figure out these measurements quick quicker than I can here. And then you can even do a third line. Let me do the third line here. And you can tell the difference because they have different colors here on this profile. and so now I switch the order of these two green cursors so now it tells me that the vertical distance the difference between the lines is negative 39 because it started here and went down to here but the peak is actually 39 nanometers tall okay so that's how to measure your nanoparticle size note height and width make a data table measure as many as you can helps to look at separate particles and then in your report, you, you can do a particle size distribution graph, average, deviation, and why is height a different value than width, even though we're looking at spheres. If you want to save this image, and this image might be very useful because it shows not only the particles, but how you're measuring them. You right click on the image and you can export the image here. JPEG is probably easier to work with in Word. And so this is my uh, old nanoparticles. Import it into Word, a Word document for my lab report. And there it is.